Hey everybody, Bethany Dotson here, relationship coach and yoga therapist for strong professional women who are seeking and desiring to overcome their pattern of attracting emotionally unavailable men or narcissistic men, um, not getting their needs met in love. So I wanted to uh, come live and talk to you about, to talk to you today about how to overcome the after effects of an unhealthy relationship um, or a period, a series of unhealthy relationships. And this after effect is constantly questioning yourself, um, constantly overanalyzing a situation, um, self-sabotage, pushing great people away, being afraid to open yourself up to um, true emotional intimacy, healthy connection. Um, and specifically today, I'm going to talk about how to tell the difference between your prior relational trauma guiding you or leading you into unfulfilling situations or sabotaging potentially healthy situations, how to tell between that and your intuition. Because what I find is often the case Women will exit a bad relationship or they'll get divorced after many, many years in an unfulfilling, possibly narcissistic uh, marriage, and then they will not know how to trust themselves. They will constantly question, is that a red flag or am I just being um, overly sensitive? Am I just paranoid because I'm afraid of it happening again? And I want to talk about three specific shifts that are going to help you um, heal that pattern. But before I talk about those, I want to talk about kind of what's really going on under the, under, behind the scenes, right? Under, um, under the hood, if you will. So a lot of people will exit that type of a relationship where they'll have a string of relationships that kind of follow same pattern, different face. And as they move through their life, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, they start to accumulate um, this fear of, I can't trust myself. What if it happens again? I'm not sure if I can believe him. I'm not sure if I can trust other people. And what's happening is that when you are in a, uh, a lopsided, draining, toxic relationship scenario where you are, you feel like you're being manipulated or you're being gaslit or, um, People are blaming you for things that hurt your feelings, or there's some kind of toxic element um, to that dynamic. What happens is that over time, you start walking on eggshells. You start living in a in a in a state of anxiety. You start um, questioning when the next shoe is going to drop. You start questioning if you're going to make it in the relationship or not. If you're really going to work out, um, and when good times happen. You start looking for the next fight. You start anticipating the next fight. And all of this begins to change the way your brain operates. And this can could have happened, by the way, in some kind of a childhood dynamic. Um, if you experience some kind of childhood trauma or a turbulent childhood, a lot of us have had turbulent childhoods. So even um, this can happen and start happening long before you enter into an adult relationship. So your brain changes in that the amygdala, the center of your brain responsible for fight or flight or freeze, danger, danger, I need to do something about it, I need to protect myself, is being activated and turned on on a more frequent basis. And if you're in a relationship that's hot and cold, or if you've been in a relationship that's up and down, it's a roller coaster, you're not really sure if you're gonna get your needs met, there's constant conflict. You're fighting about the same things over and over again. You can't trust him. Um, he's got a lot of issues. It started off really great, but then it just slowly deteriorated. That center in your brain is being turned on, and it doesn't automatically turn off when you leave. That area of your brain actually gets larger. And so as you move through your life, and you live your life outside of a toxic or narcissistic relationship, you're living your life through the lens of filtering everything through that larger amygdala or that larger fight or flight center. So you are perceiving things to possibly be a threat when they may or may not be. You might feel something in your body 
but then you jump up to your head because remember that fight or flight center has gotten bigger and you want to filter it through there. So not only has your fight or flight center in your brain gotten larger and you start filtering the events through your life from that lens, but your body then begins producing a chemical response to that. So when you were in an unhealthy relationship, your body produced a lot of adrenaline. It produced um, a lot of dopamine. It produced a lot of serotonin. It produced a lot of um, cortisol for sure, stress hormones that start to quicken your heart rate, that start to tighten your stomach, that tighten your shoulders, that cause you to hold your breath, that cause you to kind of go like that. And even though that might be for, you know, when you're hearing about that, that might be uncomfortable. What happens is that you actually get more comfortable doing that. You condition yourself to be more comfortable feeling a jolt of stress, feeling a jolt of adrenaline. So when I see people getting into new dating situations, and I, I call dating after a narcissistic relationship or an emotionally abusive relationship, or a lot of unavailable men, a re-entry period. Because it's in that re-entry, it's when you're dating again that all of that stuff that you haven't quite healed yet is gonna come flooding back to the surface. And sadly, this is where most women give up because they label it as, oh, it's happening again. This is too hard, I can't do it. Or they begin to overanalyze and get in their head and that prevents them from um, number one fully being present and when you're not fully present you are highly highly more likely to override your intuition the signals in your body and you feel those things in your body um, the second thing is that it doesn't you never fully allow yourself to enjoy an experience to open yourself to um, to an available partner. Um, and I talk to a lot of people that they, they know that they have the habit of pushing people away. They like to um, keep their distance from people based on past unhealthy, pain-producing uh, relationships that they've, that they've had. So the number one reason that you're still kind of like overanalyzing and second-guessing and questioning yourself and is it a red flag or am I overreacting? Is because your brain is living uh, largely still under a trauma response and it's actually changed. And the area of your brain that's responsible for discerning between you overreacting and your intuition, which is going to be quieter. And if you've been overriding your intuition for many, many years, it's going to be very quiet. So at least in the beginning, maybe. So you're going to need to listen up more. That part of your brain that's responsible for tuning into your intuition actually gets weaker. So this is what relational trauma does to your brain. And it takes specific training and a skill set to learn how to undo that programming. The second thing that I wanted to, to speak to quickly here before I get into the shifts is that when you are living from a past trauma response, your tendency is to want to control everything in your environment as much as you can. You wanna make your environment as safe as possible because you've experienced um, unsafety in relationship. You've been burned, you've been betrayed. Um, the person that you thought was your soulmate was really a narcissist or a covert narcissist or someone who was abusive to you in some way or unavailable to you in some way. And so that level of betrayal and cognitive dissonance can leave a mark. And so you'll go through your life, not only filtering everything through a bigger fight or flight center, but then you'll want to control your life as much as possible. And this is where I see a lot of women shutting themselves off completely from dating and relationship. Their social circle tends to get smaller and smaller. COVID, not related, right? They tend to get in a rut 
in their lives. They maybe go to a job that they're not super uh, fulfilled with, they're not super satisfied with. They hang around the same friends that complain about the same things all the time. They watch the same stuff on Netflix. They go to the gym, the same gym, and they do the same exercises, maybe. They have the same kind of routine. And I've, I've even seen people that have great desires. Maybe they want to start a dream business or they want to um, take the, a, a vacation that's been on their bucket list for 25 years. And yet they don't allow themselves to do it because the moment they start thinking about doing something differently, that fight or flight response center that's been so conditioned in a, in a traumatic relationship starts speaking up and starts talking, talking herself out of it. What if this happens? What if I decide to date again? And what if I meet another narcissist? And what if this happens? I can't stand to do this. And we start, they start going back up into their head instead of listening to their heart, instead of trusting their intuition. And I will say that when you are in the process of healing what's probably been a lifelong pattern of, of settling for unfulfilling or unavailable men, it is going to feel uncomfortable. And the two things that I just mentioned, filtering everything through a lens of fear, what could go wrong, feeling that, that, that kind of like constriction in your body, producing those chemicals, those neuropeptides in your body, over time that becomes automatic and your body actually gets more comfortable with it. You will unconsciously seek unavailable men and unfulfilling situations in your life unconsciously because your brain has been mapped that way. Even though logically you want something healthy, you're gonna unconsciously seek what matches you are mapping until you reprogram that mapping. So you'll continue to filter everything through fear and or you'll continue to try to control your life. And the sad thing that the catch here that I really want you to understand is that when you try to control your life, when you try to be the strong woman, and I see a lot of people doing this, when you try to um, have it all together, you tend to A, attract men who are a little bit less evolved. They tend to have some issues under the surface because you've kind of gone to the opposite end of the spectrum and armored yourself up and you're a super strong woman, you tend to attract weaker men because that's the law of polarity. That's how energy works. And also because somebody emotionally available, someone who is like, who is unlike anybody you've ever experienced before is going to feel uncomfortable. And because you've been so used to feeling uncomfortable in really in toxic relationships, you're going to, that's going to feel foreign to you and you might sabotage, you might push it away. So if you're living in control, you in like the strong woman and I've got to do it all and, and nobody's going to get in my heart, you're probably going to attract someone who's a little bit less involved than you would like, possibly even emotionally unavailable. And or because you're living in so much control energetically, and it's been proven now, whether you're into woo-woo stuff, law of attraction stuff or whatever, it's been proven now that in quantum physics, everything is vibrating vibrating at a frequency. Everything is made up of energy. And so if you are so tightly closed off, the thing that you really desire, whether that is living a peaceful, harmonious life um, in abundance, having financial abundance after a divorce or a narcissistic relationship, finding success in your business, eventually meeting and attracting a healthy, emotionally available partner, because you're in that, that's all in the unknown, right? And if you're so focused on controlling your life and worst case thinking everything, you're never gonna allow yourself to open up to the unknown. And emotionally unavailable men, men who can't give you what you need, working really hard to get your needs met, being the strong professional, I've got, I'm gonna do it all woman, that is what's known to you. And the thing that you really want, the change that you really want is gonna be outside of your norm. That's gonna be unknown and you have to be willing to embrace that. So in order to overcome the trauma programming in your brain, the past experiences that have been mapped into your subconscious mind that are, that are blindly 
not I don't even want to say blindly, but they're leading you into unfulfilling situations. You have to heal that. And I want to speak about the importance of having professional support. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to over the years have been in therapy. And while I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with talk therapy, I did a lot of it myself. A lot of people um, go to therapy when they're in crisis mode. Something bad has happened. They just broke up. They just got a divorce. They're thinking about getting a divorce. Um, they're, they're in a period of their life where things are getting really, really tough. And it's great to have that outside support, that outside validation from someone who's not your friend or your family member. But what I often see is that people get stuck talking about the past or talking about why it happened, and yet they don't develop a skill set on how to stop it from happening in the future and how to attract what they really want. So, and, and they don't often work with someone who is trauma informed, who knows a lot about relational trauma or narcissistic abuse. They might choose someone that is there, that is on their insurance co-payment plan, um, and they might not even like their therapist. You would be surprised at how many people I've talked to that just didn't really like their therapist. So you need professional support because we all have blind spots and you ideally need to be working with someone who works with relational trauma or complex trauma. Complex trauma is relational trauma. Essentially complex trauma is just a series of mini traumas that have happened over and over again in a relationship that's impacting your life, specifically your intimate relationships. Um, and you, you want to work with someone that you trust. You want to work with someone who has a skill set and training in this area to help you undo that subconscious programming and to help you stop living in fight or flight, to help you stop living in anxiety, worst case thinking everything, um, talking yourself out of potentially amazing situations. That self-sabotage and self-sabotage is huge when I when I see people recovering from bad relationships because again, it's their brain has been modeled in a certain way to think everything, perceive everything as a threat. So you need to work with someone, uh, a professional, whether that is a coach, whether that's a mentor, whether that's a therapist to a specific training in relational trauma recovery. And you need to use um, preferably a somatic method for trauma recovery. So somatic means mind body. I use mind body work. That's the main thing that I do here in my practice to help my clients overcome trauma from narcissistic abuse, living in fight or flight, sabotaging themselves in love and relationship, constantly choosing the wrong men, um, men who can't give them what they need by reprogramming that mind body brain connection and when you start to this does a couple of things when you start to um, regulate your brain again when you start to um, stop yourself from worst case thinking and self-sabotage your brain naturally starts to balance that amygdala the center in your brain for fight or flight starts to go down dial down tone it down it shrinks it shrinks it goes back to kind of a normal size and the area in your brain that's responsible for inner reflection, self-awareness, and I mean like level 10 self-awareness. A lot of people are aware they have a broken picker. They're aware they choose the wrong man. They're aware they're part of the problem, but yet they lack the level of self-awareness to do something differently about it in the moment. And this type of awareness is called interoceptive awareness. So this is a part of your brain that's developed so that when you are in a triggering scenario, like you're on a date with a great person, great on paper, but there's a lot of red flags, you are able to do something differently in the moment when you're triggered. And this is where so many people get stuck. They tell themselves, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do better next time, I've learned my lesson. They tell themselves, you know, I've read all the books, I know the signs now, it's okay, it's safe for me to date, it's safe for me to do something differently. But what happens is that we are all like this. When we are under pressure, hold on one quick second. My phone is ringing. When we are under pressure, I'm just gonna let it ring. We default to what we know best. And if you have been overriding red flags, if you have been, um, if you've been settling for less than you know that you deserve, whether that's in relationship or other areas of your life, when you are under pressure, 
um, like a dating scenario. It's, it's so common for human beings to default to the programming that they've been running for a long period of time because the new programming that you're trying to create is fresh, right? It's like the Grand Canyon. There's a river that runs at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. It's really, really wide. It's really deep. That's like the programming in your brain. And when you start to make new programming, in the beginning, it's really shallow. It's really narrow. It's not, not a lot of um, activity has crossed that path over a period of time. And so when you're under pressure, right, you're frustrated, you're, you're anxious, something feels off, you are more likely to go back to what you know. And so that's why it's also important to work with a professional who can help you guide you out of that step by step. Let me make sure that was the first thing, professional support. Um, and then when you've learned to dial down your fight or flight response and you have learned to turn on your inner receptive awareness, the part of you that can discern my intuition, am I overreacting? My intuition, am I overreacting? you then begin to trust the signals from your body. And I will tell you with 100% certainty, your body always knows. Every single person that I've ever worked with, that I've ever spoken to, always knew within a very short period of time with their ex that something was off. They couldn't tell specifically what it was, but they felt it, right? The more you have overridden that response, the harder it is going to be to trust that. But when you have properly healed your trauma, that opening, that connection becomes stronger. It's like you reconnect to that. So when you have properly started healing your trauma, that connection to your intuition is going to be stronger. You're no longer going to want to jump up into your head and start overanalyzing. You're going to be able to have a calm discussion. By the way, another big benefit of doing this work is that you don't um, ignore things. You don't, uh, you don't people please. You don't avoid conflict any longer. You learn how to speak up because something I didn't mention before when you are in a traumatic, when your brain has been programmed from prior trauma, it also turns the, turns down the area responsible for speech, using your voice, speaking up for what you need. But another great benefit of doing this work is that you learn to develop proper communication, especially during conflict, especially when you feel like your boundaries are being violated, especially when you feel like um, you know, you, you need to say something that's important to you or you need to speak about something that doesn't feel right. You're able to do that confidently and without um, worst case thinking or without, you know, fearing rejection or abandonment. Right. So the first is professional support to heal that traumatic programming. The second piece is that once you have done that, you begin to strengthen your connection to your body. You stop jumping up into your head to overanalyze and, and talk yourself out of things. You are able to trust yourself more and more and trust that signal from your body, even if it doesn't, even if there's not a lot of logical reasoning yet, and especially even if it's asking you to do something that is out of your comfort zone. And this leads me to the third shift. You have to be willing to practice in real life. And this is in relationship. So many people tell me, and this is a common thing that I see, a lot of people will read books, they'll go to therapy, they'll watch YouTube videos, they'll do whatever, but then they don't practice what they're learning. They don't take action on it. And the only way to break your pattern, same, break your, your cycle of same pattern, different face, is to get into your relationship. And in the beginning, when I work with people, it's not intimate relationship. We practice in other relationships. But eventually, you need to take action in relationship because it's when you're in relationship with another person, that person is going to mirror back to you your unconscious, your subconscious things, right? Whether you want to fully admit it or not, on some level, you're always co-creating who you're drawing in to your life. And when you fully 
do the inner work, when you clean up your subconscious programming, when you build yourself up from the inside and literally become a different person, right? Your brain mapping is different. Your subconscious programming is different. You're no longer living in anxiety or worst case thinking or overanalyzing. When you become that type of a person, who you attract on the outside starkly changes. You're no longer attracting people that are unavailable to you because every time you ignore a red flag, every time you sweep something under the rug, every time you stay with someone when you know deep down it's probably settling or every time you say yes when you really mean no, you are abandoning yourself. You are being unavailable, emotionally unavailable to yourself. And so in order to attract an emotionally unavailable partner and have a wildly abundant, prosperous future in your life without fear, living in anxiety, worst case thinking, you have to change who you're being on the inside. And I'm talking about your past, learning why it happened, learning why your ex did this does not do that. You need a skill set. So just to quickly recap, the three things that you need to do to shift out of overanalyzing self-sabotaging yourself, worst case thinking, getting into dating situations and going, is that a red flag? I'm not really sure, maybe I'm overreacting, um, is to properly heal your prior trauma, your prior relational trauma, prior complex trauma with someone who's skilled in that arena. The second thing that you need to do is um, learn, once you do that, is to, um, trust begin practicing and trusting your intuition when you have un when you've un unprogrammed deprogrammed your trauma response you are naturally going to have an a wider opening a wider connection to your body you're not going to want to jump up here and overanalyze things you're going to catch yourself in that moment because you've developed interoceptive awareness and you've stopped filtering your life through a fight or flight response you've started to filtering your life through reflection through slowing down through taking in the information through taking in the trigger and instead of reacting slowing down and deciding choosing what you want to do with that feeling so many people automatically feel a negative feeling when it's a red flag when it's a something in the pit of their stomach and they decide i'm just going to ignore it i'm just going to overwrite it and they get so good at doing that that it becomes an automatic pattern an automatic habit. So once you've properly healed your trauma, then you have the availability and the space, the space in your brain to do something differently. You start building new programming, building new mapping. And then finally, you have to practice in relationship. It's great to do this work on your own. When I work with my clients, we do a lot of this work uh, on their own. But then eventually, it's time to introduce people into your environment and see how you do. So you need to be willing to take action and get feedback from the people in your life, whether that is a current friend, a current family member, a boss, and then eventually dating when you're ready to start dating again. So if you have any questions, yes, Melissa, childhood, yes, somatic therapy does help with childhood trauma. I'm gonna be sure to watch after, okay. I think that's it. So if you, you catch this on replay, hit hashtag replay. Let me know if you have any questions um, about anything that I discussed with you today. And uh, I will see you next week. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye-bye.